Welcome to Heartland for Children's Let's Talk About It podcast, where we provide education and resources for family matters in Polk, Highlands, and Hardy counties. We're so glad that you've joined us. So now, let's talk about it. Welcome to Heartland for Children's Let's Talk About It podcast. I am Natalia Clemens. I am the Community Engagement Specialist here at Heartland. And this month is Water Safety Month, so I'm here with Taylor Freeman. She is the Public Health Planning Manager for the Florida Health Department here in Polk County. Welcome. Thank you. So we're going to talk about water safety. Yeah, I'm super excited to be here and talk about this. I know it's something that we're both very passionate about. So, Well, I definitely know you are. I know Mm -hmm. that when it comes to the world of safety and prevention, whether Mm. it is safe sleep, whether it is uh, bike and helmet safety. Yes. Um, what else are we, what else, other, uh, water safety? Water safety, all car of the seats. safeties. I there do car seat stuff. I do yeah. medication safety, education on poisoning, all of that kind of stuff. Gotcha. Safety, I'm your girl. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so public health planning manager, what does that mean? What does your job entail? So basically, I am the owner of every plan that the agency has to do anything as an agency. Um, So I am one of two public health planners. We kind of split what our roles are. And the whole purpose of having us on staff is so that we can come up with actionable items that move health indicators or move quality of life indicators. So the best way to kind of explain that is to give an example. So since we're talking about water safety, when we talk about drownings, we want to try to keep an eye on the number of drowning fatalities, but not just fatalities, the number of drowning submersions we even have, because we want to prevent it from even happening in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't just want to focus on those that we're losing. We want to focus on those that are even going under for a second. So we want to go through and we want to look at what would be a reasonable goal. What is our data like now? What would be a reasonable goal to project in three to five years? And then once we have that goal, how can we galvanize the community and our partners like Heartland for Children Mm -hmm. um, and work together so that we can reduce that rate of drowning? So we can improve the health or quality of life because sometimes we're focused on behavioral health indicators, um, building, you know, safe streets where we're adding um, lighting and sidewalks to streets so that it's safer to walk. So any of those kind of health and quality of life indicators to improve how Polk County residents live their daily lives. Gotcha. Okay. So that's a lot. Yeah, it is. It's a lot. (laughs) All right. Well, tell me a little bit about yourself Um, because I love to to learn more about your background and just even about you personally. Yeah. So, well, how I came to DOH, um, I actually have a bachelor's from USF in health sciences um, with a minor in psychology. So a lot of like dabbling there. Um, And now I'm actually enrolled in a master's program to, um, and I start that in August. I'm super excited. (laughs) Um, Master's in public health. So I'm excited to further my education in that. Um, And really, I kind of came to the Department of Health by happenstance. I mean, I had graduated from USF with my health sciences degree, and I applied like most college graduates do. Um, And they hired me on as a planner. But the fact that I got into safety is kind of like a fate thing to me. So my dad worked at the railroad growing up, and I actually got a huge scholarship to go to college from writing a um, an essay and doing a project through the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Foundation (laughs) about safety and why it's important on the railroad for all the men and women that work on the railroad to you know wear hard hats and all of their safety equipment and so you've been their protocol since I was like eight. (laughs) Yep, and then. I was also a dancer, so then I started dancing for uh, Disney, Mm -hmm. and I was actually Ariel for a while, and so through that, I heard lots of swimming stories from, you know, kids that want to sit on your lap and tell you all the swimming stories, Um, and then when I came back here and I got hired on at DOH, my very first assignment was in water safety, and I was like, it's full circle. Yeah, it is. It's full circle. It ties everything that I've ever done in my whole life yeah, together. Even so. the Ariel and Disney. Exactly. It. Exactly. It's so it's perfect. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's great. So what do you do in your personal life? What do you enjoy? Anything adventurous. So I am very, very outdoorsy. I love hiking. I love camping. I love, I love fishing with my dad. Yeah. Um, I'm a Polk County girl, you know, born and raised. So I love all of the family activities that you normally do with your parents, you know, like sitting around the campfire and telling stories, things like that. 
And then I also really like to like go see like live shows, like music shows, things like that, yeah. where I can kind of people watch and just soak in that energy. Now, do you enjoy water activities? I love water activities. I learned to swim when I was like okay. a year and a half. And so I really am like a mermaid. <laughs> Yeah. So I didn't, while well, I've been a Floridian now for a while, I did not grow up doing water activities. Okay. Um, you know, maybe I went to the pool, but I am sort of like your, you know, I got the doggy paddle down. Yeah. But other than that, like. We're keeping an eye on you. <laughs> yeah. And especially at the beach, um, yeah. especially with currents, um, I get like very nervous with yeah. the currents um, and I'm just not a strong swimmer. Mm -hmm. So when, but my husband, on the other hand, he was a water baby for sure, you know, grew up boating had a pool they were in there throughout the day you mm -hmm. know so he has he's very relaxed around water yeah um and so when we started having our kids i was you know frantically looking for swim lessons what do i do next mm -hmm. and so i'm sure that my story is similar to a lot of new caregivers new parents mm -hmm. of feeling like well what do i do next if you're not very comfortable around the water so yeah. what are some things that you would suggest um, to begin this process for somebody who has a new uh, has children mm -hmm. that are going to be around water. So I would say the first thing that doesn't even necessarily involve conquering any kind of fear or anxiety around the water is CPR certification. Very mm -hmm. first thing, anybody that's going to be a new parent or a caregiver or honestly even like a babysitter. I know that's also a caregiver, but a babysitter of you know yeah. a future child definitely get CPR certified because that can actually save a life. I, before I got super into water safety education, I kind of was like, okay, CPR, everybody needs it, you know? Yeah. But it really is life-saving. I mean, in four to six minutes, you can have brain damage. And if you do CPR and keep that oxygen going, you can keep that from happening. So that would be the first yeah. thing. Okay. Um, then I would say just start with things that include your child that kind of slowly start getting you more comfortable in the water for example, like those mommy and me classes that are mm -hmm. offered. A lot of people have a misconception about those and they kind of think, oh, it's going to be where we're actually teaching, you know, actual swim skills that, or whatever. Most of, some of those classes are, I'm not saying they all aren't, mm -hmm. but a lot of those are really kind of focused on getting both mom and baby comfortable in the water because yeah. baby feeds off of your energy so much. Right, that's true. And so making sure that you're both confident, that you're both comfortable with each other and that you trust each other in the water mm -hmm. so that then when it does come time to enroll in those swim lessons, then we can already have that confidence and they you know, have, have the ability to kind of leave mom's side and, and actually learn those skills. Yeah. Um, and then what would be that next step? Is it like the enrolling for swim classes maybe that are a little bit more in depth or? Absolutely. So there is like a step up from there. So once I believe most of our public pools in Polk specifically do group classes for children that are potty trained and around like two, I think is the youngest age that they start taking them. Um, and they will start in a group class where they're teaching them actual, the mechanics of swimming. So okay. like how you were saying, you know how to doggy paddle, they'll yeah. start with that. They'll start with teaching them to float, making sure that if they, you know, go in the water and submerge that they can flip themselves over and they know how to kind of yell for help and kind of get themselves over to the wall so that they can get out if yeah. they need to. Um, and it'll start with things like that. And then as the child ages and their skills progress, so once a child is in lessons, it's kind of based more on skill than it is on age. However, as we know, kind of those skills kind of go with age brackets right. naturally. Right. Um, but they will move up and they will learn other things like even progressing to at the end, learning things like butterfly stroke and like front stroke, like things that you would learn on the swim team. Yeah. So it'll be even more than just being safe. It'll be all of the skills. Gotcha. Okay. And mm -hmm. this is this is really important for adults too. Yeah. Honestly, the more that we have this conversation, the more I realize that if you do have that fear as an adult, that there is nothing wrong with getting swim lessons yourself, getting Absolutely. more comfortable. And, and so in Polk County, we do have those services, right? We do actually, we used to not. Um, so when we first started compiling that swim lessons list, which was about seven years ago, we didn't have any public offering of adult swim lessons. We did have a lot of private instructors. So I don't want to speak. We did have a lot of private instructors that offered adult swim lessons, but our city parks and recs departments have been phenomenal. And hearing that feedback from the, the community of, okay, well now my kid knows how to swim, but 
I still don't know how to swim. So if my kid gets yeah. in trouble, how can I help them? And um, our city aquatics departments at Lakeland, Tain City, and Winter Haven all offer um, adult classes. So um, I know so. Lakelands are on Saturdays. I'm not totally sure about when Winter Havens are, but I know Lakelands are on Saturdays to kind of go around that work schedule so that's that, great. that parents yeah, can come. That's really helpful. And the adult lessons are like, um, they're longer sessions, but the length of lessons are shorter because as an adult, you know, you need a little bit, you can, you can pay attention a little bit longer Got and it. you need a little bit less practice to, to master those skills. So I'm definitely going to need it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll get you. We'll get you. Yeah. So water is everywhere. Yes. Um, and so when we're talking about homes that have pools, I know, you know, they're, we have lakes and beaches and mm -hmm. all sorts of other things, but specifically with homes with pools, can you talk to me about um, things to consider? Um, Absolutely. So yeah. I will talk about homes with pools, but I also want to point out that every home has water. So yeah. like you said, water is everywhere. Every home has, has toilets. Every home has a bathtub and a shower and potentially a laundry room. So um, all of those things are things that you have to consider, especially when you're having children. So as far as inside the home, just always make sure bathroom doors are closed, toilet lids are closed. They do have those like locking devices, child yeah. safety lock devices. However, sometimes those are a pain. So it's honestly just easier to close the door, keep the door closed right. so that the kid can't get in um, while nobody's watching. Um, then we wanna look at the exit points of the home to the pool or even mm -hmm. an outdoor water source, like you said, if there's a pond outside or, or something like ditch. that. Exactly, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So when we look at protecting those exit ways, we wanna look at things like door alarms, which a lot of, uh, a lot of homes actually have door alarms now because it's something that is um, beneficial for your homeowner's insurance because it's like an extra safety thing. So you kind of get like a credit on okay. your homeowner's insurance. I don't know if it leads to like a discount, but it like adds up to points on your safety thing. Okay. Um, and so in addition to that, a lot of the pools that are built after the year 2000, the builders will provide homes with a door alarm. And if a home doesn't have a door alarm, then we can get one for as little as $7 at Home Depot. Um, and so those just kind of go on those exit points. Mm -hmm. And anytime anybody opens a door, uh, it does the beep, 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 that three yeah. little beeps. And so mm -hmm. it just kind of lets you know somebody's exiting or somebody's entering. It's not always a toddler. It's not always a child. But at least you know to, to keep an eye on the pool. Right. And then when we go out to the actual pool, if you do have a pool at your home, um, Pools are required now, if they're built after 2000, to have screened enclosures on the outside three corners to keep basically people that aren't in the home from getting into the pool yeah. to reduce that liability. Mm -hmm. So they also now would recommend at least having one barrier in between the home and the pool itself. So while you can get away with the door alarm being that one barrier, mm -hmm. we like to recommend that there's some sort of pool fencing or a gate, um, especially one that self-latches, which means if you let it go and it closes behind you, it locks. Yeah. So you couldn't come in right behind me and, and just grab right. it and open it. Um, and that just deters pe kids especially, but people in general from going into the pool when nobody's there so that we have no accidents. Any, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. especially with our children but even like you said our adults I mean you could be walking on the side of your pool and slip and mm -hmm. knock yourself unconscious and nobody would know if you hadn't told right. anybody so right. you know it's just something to be extra safe and aware of when we're yeah practicing water safety so even when we're in the pool mm -hmm. I have heard stories of you know there were a lot of parents hanging out and there were people watching and still there was a drowning that yes. happened that could have been prevented um, can you speak to that at all absolutely so that actually happens more often than not. Um, I am a member of the Child Abuse Death Review Committee, and I would tell you that at least one third of the drowning cases that we we review, somebody thought somebody else was watching mm. the child. And that is what we're finding, that wow. if there's more than one adult, Taylor thinks Natalia's watching the right. kids, Natalia thinks Taylor's watching the yeah. kids, and then nobody nobody's watching them. So we do have um, a... Uh, initiative in place to kind of help with that. Um, they're called water washer tags. And so it's just this little nifty tag. It almost looks like an ID badge. Yeah. Um, and it just states on the front, it says, I am the water washer. And on the back, it tells you what that means. Yeah. But what that means is that you are committing to not being distracted and actively supervising the children when they're in the water. There should only be one water washer. 
And just for clarification, active supervision means you actually have to scan the pool every 30 seconds and never be without uh, further than arm's distance from yeah. children that are not proficient swimmers. So it's a lot of work, is, uh, which yeah. means you can't be distracted mm -hmm. by your phone, by reading, by having a conversation with another adult, by cooking. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. we're out there grilling. You can't grill at the same time as being the water watcher. And it's reasonable to believe that you can't do that the entire time that you're at the pool party, but that's why you have the tag because then say you're our water watcher and you need to go cook something inside for, for our barbecue. Right. You can just take off your tag and you can say, hey, Taylor, can you be the water watcher now? I need to go in and, and get the macaroni or something and I'll take over and now it's my responsibility to watch the kids. So we know always that somebody is covered, kind of yeah. like zone defense, you know, yeah. somebody's always keeping an eye on the kids. No, that's great. I, I, I think about the birthday parties I've been to. I mean, right. it's Florida. It's the summer. We're going to have a lot of um, outdoor activities, mm -hmm. having pool parties for birthdays. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, with that comes different levels. We think we know, oh, yeah, my, my child knows how to swim. Mm -hmm. But when you um, are being, while you're a parent and you may know your own child's, you know, swim education, you may not know someone else's child's swim education. So I imagine that it's really important for you to know that as well when you're hosting Absolutely. parties, knowing the comfort level for yep. children while they're in the pool. Oh yeah. Um, and I've also been to parties where it's really fun to bring inflatables in. Like I was slides. just gonna talk about the inflatables. <laughs> I ha We're okay. on the same vibe here. I have, <laughs> so I have a story where my son was at this birthday party and there, and all of a sudden he just disappears. I am freaking out because uh -huh. he is- Worst so nightmare. Worst nightmare, where yep. did this child go? Um, and we're at someone else's home. Mm -hmm. And um, now I'm like panicking because it's like, what's 20 seconds? Right. Is it 20 seconds for? It's less than a minute. Less so. than a minute that a child can yep. drown. Um, so I'm looking around for him and there was this cool inflatable slide. And the two oh, of the I kids know. decided, apparently you can go underneath it. Well, fine, you're not in the water, but you could just hide underneath it. And they thought it was so funny. It scared me so oh, much. Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, so I just uh, considered that for families who mm -hmm. they're adding, you know, pool inflatables yeah. that are fun for the party, yeah. but could be something that causes an accident. Absolutely. Well, and another hazard about the inflate. Besides the fact that a lot of times if you bring a lot of inflatables or those, you know, those floaties that just go around yeah. the arms, they give the child, especially if they don't know how to swim, a false sense of confidence. Mm -hmm. And if they were to pass out for some reason, especially with those floaties, where where's mm -hmm. their head going? Nothing's right. supporting their head. So their head's yeah. still going straight down yeah. and they're still going to experience a drowning, mm -hmm. even though they have these floaties on. So there's the, there's the false confidence. But then also, if we have a lot of tool, toys in the pool, and then say we go in and have lunch, and we just decide, oh, well, we're coming back out after lunch, so let's not clean up the toys. We're about to go right back into the pool. No big deal. But what if something happens in, in the time that we're in having lunch, and somebody gets into the pool and gets submerged? Now we can't see them at the bottom of the pool. So just for that extra safety sake, we always want to make sure that we are cleaning up the actual pool area when we're leaving, whenever, even if mm -hmm. we're leaving the pool for just 15 minutes, we wanna make sure that that pool is clean so that yeah. if somebody does go missing randomly and we check the pool first, always, when we check that pool, we can see to the bottom and we can know, okay, Natalia is not in the pool, so we're good. We can check We can check the front yard <laughs> or something, you know? I'm by the food, I'm probably by the food. <laughs> She's at the grill still. <laughs> um, so Florida is also notorious for tourism. Yes. So we have a lot of people from out of state coming mm -hmm. who don't, maybe they have speaking about that like false sense of mm -hmm. uh, confidence when it comes to being around our water. Um, I know that recently there are, there's been conversations with Airbnb. Mm -hmm. um, what is that all about? Yeah, so, okay. So let me nerd out and throw like a couple like data facts at you and Please. then I'll tell you about Airbnb. So, you know, as a planner, I am partial I data nerd. So. <laughs> Um, we actually, through Safe Kids, we did do a survey with parents about the dangers of water and their perception around the dangers of water. So we are seeing that parents know that water in itself is a danger because we had 96% of parents that took this survey. And these are parents that actually already had their children actively enrolled in swim lessons. So they already know mm -hmm. that water is important or that water safety is important. 
Um, 90% of those parents responded to that survey saying, yes, water is dangerous. Okay. Then a few questions later, the question was, does water pose a danger to your child in particular? And only 61% of parents stated that, yeah, they thought that water posed a danger to their child. Those that thought that it didn't were like, oh, well, we don't have a pool. So, you know, or we're, we're so we, my friends have a pool, so we're only at the pool when we're at our friend's house right. or out of town. So that kind of leads into our vacation rentals. Mm. We looked with Polk Fire Rescue at our calls last year. Um, and they actually responded to 46 drowning related calls wow. of those 46, 27 of them were in vacation rentals. Wow. Not okay. all Airbnb, of course, yeah. you know, but vacation rentals or people that are out of town. So mm -hmm. it's definitely something that's a big deal. We want to make sure that not only our Polk County residents knowing that we need to stay safe around the water, but everybody that is flocking to Polk County, since we're in the center of all of these grand things Disney. around us. We yeah, we have Tampa, these. we've got the beaches less than an hour mm -hmm. away. I mean, we've got, we're the central hub for all of these things and they're staying here and then vacationing there. And so we wanna make sure that we're getting that education to all of those families. Um, so Department of Children and Families and then Department of Health in Tallahassee, our central offices, actually were able to contact Airbnb at their corporate office and talk to them about some mm -hmm. of the dangers that these families are facing and how important it is and how high our drowning rates are in the entire state of Florida, not just Polk. Um, and then Airbnb actually took it very seriously, took it upon themselves to then craft a letter with our with our help. And they sent that out to all of the host properties that listed that they had a pool oh, on right. site. And so they just kind of informed them, here's what the rates are. And then they even got specific for whatever county that property was in. Here's what the rates are for your county. Here are the dangers and here are things that we need to be telling renters That's when they're coming into town. and. Airbnb has since had a very good response from those hosts. Those hosts have actually responded and, and said, where can we get water safety resources that we can leave in the homes, that we can just you know, make as mm -hmm. part of our welcome packet that we're giving them water safety education or a water watcher tag or a swim lessons list or something like that. Um, and so they're actually trying to co coordinate right now in Tallahassee, what is the best way to get those resources locally? So uh, we're looking forward to that, that county level coordination, yeah. but it's still a huge win and so exciting yeah. to know that the hosts like are taking it seriously and Airbnb absolutely. as a corporation is behind us. So absolutely. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about Polk, Polk County since you know these stats. Yeah. What are our hotspots? What are places that we should be, you know, looking out for or um, really, you know, when it comes to safety, mm -hmm. really spreading that message? Yeah. So we don't. So the problem with Polk is we are such a large yeah. county yeah. Um, and we have so many sources of water. So we definitely, you know, I don't want to understate that we want to make sure that we get water safety from one corner to the other and make sure that everybody is included. Um, but when you talk about hotspots, we are, we do see some trends as far as where our, most of our drownings occur. Um, we have looked at the, that calls data with Polk Fire Rescue. We've been looking at that for about six ish years now and over that six year period um every year number one davenport the city of davenport has the most drownings now i do know we do have a lot of vacation rentals in davenport and a lot of people are coming and staying in davenport um, and so a lot of those are not local people a lot of those are our mm -hmm. vacationers um, so we definitely want to focus there with our vacation stuff Lakeland, I'm sure it's not surprising, being the biggest city in Polk County, Lakeland has consistently been number two for the most drownings in the city, or in the county, sorry. Um, and then for number three, we kind of oscillate. Um, Haines City and Winter Haven, they switch off year to year. Um, but we do have uh, pretty high rates of calls in both Haines City and Winter Haven. Um, so we definitely want to make sure that we are looking at those, those urban areas within those mm -hmm. cities, but also the outskirts of the cities where, like you said, maybe their water source is a drainage ditch or a mm -hmm. lake, and it's not necessarily a pool. We want to focus on our pools, but we want to make sure that we're including even our outliers. Right. And so for these families, if they're looking for resources, where can they go? Absolutely. So they can go um, to Safe Kids. They can get all of the checklists as far as pool safety checklists. Um, 
we even have things like boater safety. So if you have a boat and you want to know how to be safe and what the life life jackets you have to take and things. So you can get all kinds of checklists from Safe Kids. Um, they can always reach out to me for resources if they need something yeah. directly. I have water washer tags. I've got all of the, the good lists as well. Um, but we also have um, a swim lessons list postcard that we have created this year. So every year, the Coalition on Injury Prevention of Polk County has a water safety subcommittee um, that pulls together all of the lessons that are available in Polk. Now, I don't want to say all, including all of the private lessons, because that would be a very, very big <laughs> list, but it does have all of our public lessons and then a few of our private instructors that have um, dialed into the Water Safety Subcommittee and they're, they're really committed to um, offering things like scholarships for those lessons and things like that. Um, they're included on that swim lessons list, and that is actually hosted on the Department of Health website. Okay. We have, uh, it's very, very new, but we now have a water safety webpage as part of our um, Department of Health website. And you can find the swim lessons list there, but you can also, for the summer, we have hosted it as an event. So if you go to our webpage, there's like a, a calendar of events that's always at the top of our webpage. And okay. so they, uh, our communications department has graciously hosted an event of swim lessons from May until September to cover the whole um, summer. So you can just kind of click on there, look at the events tab, and it'll take you right to that swim lessons list. That's great. I yeah. feel like you've given me a lot of great information, a lot of things to think about. Even though we are in, in water safety there, even after this conversation, I've thought about um, ways that I can, one, I had my CPR certification years ago, mm -hmm. so I want to update that. Um, and then even, you know, updating swim lessons for me, but also I, I did a lot of the swim lessons for my first child and I really want to uh, focus on that for my second child. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think sometimes we're, we did all the swim lessons and we think the second child or the mm -hmm. third or fourth, they just will watch and learn, but it's good to focus and and have some classes for them. Absolutely. Too. And it sounds like your family specifically is in the water consistently, mm -hmm. but for those families that are in that kind of same situation where you have an older one that you did get certified for swim lessons and then a younger one that isn't, that older one, if you're not consistently swimming, they might actually need a refresher lesson. Mm -hmm. So I did want to make sure that we we yeah. kind of put that out there. Those refresher lessons are half the time of the of the okay. original lessons, and it's just to kind of reiterate those skills until your child is a proficient swimmer. Mainly for those of us that are like, okay, I swim from July to August, and that's it. <laughs> no, this is Florida. You yeah, know that right. You're swimming year round, except so for January and February. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was great, yeah. and I appreciate you so much, Taylor, for how you advocate in our community. Thank you um, for how you are um, working to keep our kids safe. Um, so I really appreciate you coming out. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening to Heartland for Children's Let's Talk About It podcast. There is a great need for foster families who are willing to open their hearts and homes to teens, sibling groups, and children with special needs. To learn more, check out the description for resources or visit heartlandforchildren.org.